Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, it's Avangel, and today we're looking at a latest Nemeth Designs review. Now, don't adjust your eyes, this does look very similar to a Piper, but it's not. It's the Sai um, Marchetti, Italian builder, of course, S205. This is a single-engine 4 c all-metal light aircraft uh, manufactured by Sai Marchetti. Italy, I'm mispronouncing it, of course. Uh, first took flight in 65, and it's been used throughout the years for both civil and military training. And it has retractable gear, a standard empennage, and a main wing with a span of 35 feet. It has a four-cylinder Lycoming O360, putting out 180 horsepower. And it has a Hartzell constant speed two-blade prop. It has a range of about 930 nautical miles, cruises about 160 miles an hour. And it can climb about 900 feet per minute to a service ceiling of 17,000 17, feet. Now, it's been known as a very proven performer as an aircraft, and it apparently is a very well-regarded aircraft. This one comes with numerous liveries there, all rather interesting ones, in fact. It has 4K textures, apparently realistic flight model, and realistic operations per the flight manual. So we could call this a... what's the word I'm looking for now? What would you call these? I'm always forgetting things, and... Screw it. I don't know what to call it. It's, it's accurate, apparently. We'll, we'll base that on what we see in the aircraft. And it does come with a PDF manual. So we'll take a look. So, let's go outside first. Now, we're here, of course, at Orcas Island. This is the Orbex Airport, in case anyone's interested. Exterior detail looks rather nice, I have to say. It is quite pretty. Well detailed model. I'm not seeing any textured derp right now. Okay, there's a slight kind of weirdness to the kink of that, but I think it's more of the angle of things. Although that doesn't look looks like it's trying to wrap the texture underneath and it's kind of dragged it a little bit, but not horrible. Let's look at the brakes. I always like to look at the brakes to decide how much I like an aircraft. And the gear. That's reasonable. Let's go back inside. Okay, so we're here in the cockpit, and okay, the zoom point's a little bit far out, but that's not the end of the world. Yoke's visibility's off, and this does look like a very standard cockpit. Now, this one I don't think I can click off, which is interesting. Now, of course, we can't pull the breakers, which is unfortunate there, but we do have storm window here. And I believe we have a door on this side, or one of the sides. This is better open. Oh, there's another one there. Okay. Reasonable looking glass too. I like how it... Look at that. I like how it warps the texture underneath it as you move the glass. Like it's changing the actual refraction. I've not seen that before. That's cool. Okay. Little vent here doesn't seem to do anything. Landing your emergency retract... Or, sorry, emergency extension. Of course, we've got our starter safety there. Throttle, mixture, and prop. We have an old school radio down here. Or an old school ADF, I should say, which is kind of cool. I do like the look of that. Texture-wise, this is really neat. Now, remember, we had the Yak last from them. These are slightly older sets, but at least they're interesting. But the texturing's lovely. I do rather like this. Okay, here's our door. How do I open you? I can't work out how to open this door. Oh, there's a there's a handle right there. I'm an idiot. Although in my defense, it was right behind the... Let's reset that. Right behind the yoke. Now, this doesn't seem to open, which is on par with what we had from the last aircraft, the Yak. You couldn't open the doors either. Which is unfortunate, as they've apparently put the windows to be open, the storm window, but you can't open the door. That seems odd as a feature, if I'm honest. But there you go. Uh, okay, let's get us started up, take a look around in here and see what we're doing. So we have our parking brake here set to on. So let's get ourselves started. So battery is right there. Generator Avionics are on. So we have our GPS here. 
everything functions as it should. We have autopilot and DME. Now this is our audio panel down there. So we have transponder here. We do have an autopilot, I think. We do. Autopilot control there. Although I'm not sure what it's actually going to control. We have heading hold. And we have altitude hold. We do not have a nav hold. Although I'm probably sure that if you did the shortcut for nav hold, it will work. Because the function's enabled. So we'll assume that. But this is our DME controls here. Autopilot is just here. So it's a real simple autopilot. But it will do the job you want it to do. So we have a fuel boost pump there. We'll turn that on. Let's get our magnetos on here. Set to both. This is independent, of course, from what we've got there. Put the cover off. Oh, just flicking that starts the engine. See, I thought I'd be to start to depressurize that. I should do that and start it. But apparently just flicking the cover does that. Okay. So, start is apparently depressed already. It's permanently on. Interesting. Because that started when I lifted the cover. So that's a small quirk to that aircraft. But uh, what else do we have? We've got our gear indicators. We have lots of air. Panel lights. Cabin lights. And baggage lights. Let's turn those on. Let's see what this thing looks like at night, shall we? Oh, we have sunshades. We can... The hell? Okay, I think the engine's just winding down. Yep, the engine's wound down. Or is it? Interesting. Interesting twist. Oh, dear God. Uh, what the hell did you just do? This is... Curious. Okay. That was weird. And again, I pull down the sunshade and weird stuff starts to happen. Let's scroll that back up, out of the way. Okay then. Alrighty then. <laughs> um, this seems like it's going to be an adventure, doesn't it? Let's taxi... Let's taxi her out to the uh, runway, shall we? So let's give ourselves some flaps here. Turn my head on. And the parking brake's still on, so despite the fact that was on, I just yeeted across the runway. And we had sound issues when we played with the visor. That is curious. Maybe that's why they don't put doors on. Maybe if we put doors on, it'd flip. Super squeaky brakes. And is the ground handling as weird as we've had from these guys in the past? Oh, I was going to do a night lighting test, wasn't I, before things went freaky deaky. Okay, so I'm holding the brakes here, but this is still rolling. Interesting. It won't stay still. Okay. It stops under the brakes and it starts rolling again. Like nothing's even wrong. Uh, put the parking brake on. Let's do a night lighting test. You know, like I intended to before it decided it wanted to be weird. Okay. Let's put the panel lights on as well. So let's turn the cabin lights off. Okay. Actually easily readable. Panel lights, of course, are there. We'll put that back to daytime, so prepare your eyes. I'm starting to feel some weird flight dynamics behavior from this. Okay. Oh, those are on. So these are our panel lights down here. Okay, let's hold on to our hats and try and fly this thing without it murdering me. Parking brake off. And even at throttle closed, we're getting immediate thrust, which is weird. Let's advance that slightly and get ourselves rolling here and see what she wants to do. Yeah, the ground handling is odd. And the engine sound behavior when I moved the sun visor, maybe that was a coincidence. Maybe it's not connected, but that felt very weird. Picks up speed quite quickly. Let's pull the gear in. Super loud there. Very fast retraction. In fact, I'll pull it down here so you can see it again. Super loud. Louder, in fact, than the engine.
Okay, engine sounds not terrible. Let's see if we get wind. Not really, no. Now, for context, I paid for this myself on Sim Market. It was 21 euros. We seem to be seeing a bit of a shift in marketing when it comes to flight sim aircraft because there was an uproar about the BAE 146 price that's been dropped. And for a, should we say, sim, full fidelity sim level airliner, it's not unreasonable to start with, but it's more acceptable now. Considering what we got from the 247, uh, this is a similar price. And if you really like Italian aircraft, maybe it's for you. But as far as I'm concerned, this does seem to hit the same problem of being... It's pretty. It's very pretty. But it has issues. I would have really expected the door to open. That does bug me. I also can't tell how the door opens there. Because you've clearly got a door crack around the back and the front the top there. And unless this hinges somehow magically, there's no gap there unless this opens up at this part and that's the edge of the jam. You can't remove the co-pilot yoke. You can't see a visible co-pilot. Oh, our flaps are still set down. Let's pull those up there. It's pretty inside. I really like it. It's a nice looking aircraft. And it flies and appears like a piper. It feels like an arrow. Arrow 3. But a bit more exciting. A bit more excitable. Now, whether that's a flight model issue or not, I'm not sure. But with 180 horsepower on the engine and its performance statistics, it does feel on par with what it should do. It is fast. Faster than an arrow, in fact. And it has autopilot functions. It has DME. It has ADF. I love the old-style radios. The radios in this are gorgeous. This is a dramatic improvement from the Yak that Nameth Designs brought out. But it still has flaws, like the lack of sound when that opens. The weird ground behaviour still seems to be a Nemeth issue, uh, because there were weird issues with the Yak. And this one as well seems to be having some weirdness going on. Let's take a look outside as we're in flight. It is a pretty aeroplane. I do like it. It has a bit of that retro flair, and it definitely looks like it's copied Piper. And it does have 3D sound. I would say the engine sounds are very low compared to <laughs> the gear sounds of other systems, which are loud, yes, but they're not as loud as the engine. Not in real life. Yes, you'll definitely hear them quite loudly in the cockpit, but the engine would be a lot louder. So there's always that. Do I get a gear horn? I do not. I can go to full idle on the throttle and no gear warning. Although it is flashing. saying the gear is retracted. There we go, solid it there, and it flashes. Which is a far less annoying warning, if I'm honest. So let's put that down. Okay, bring ourselves back around here for approach to the runway at Orcus. Runway 3-4 here. So our speed doing is give it a notch or two of flaps. See, the sound of the flap level compared to the gear level is very different. This is a weird angle right now. I'm going to try and straighten myself up here and then turn on to heading. So we're down about 75 knots right now to keep that power up a minute. And we'll straighten up for our final approach. Yeah, we're leveling ourselves off here. Let's roll around onto heading. Still a little bit off centre, but we'll straighten that up as we go. It flies very well. It loses speed accurately, or realistically, I'd say. Never flown one of these, so I can't confirm that, but it does seem to actually lose speed when you pull off the power. It is slippery, though, because it's a very clean airframe. With the gear down, it becomes a lot dirtier. Let's manage our airspeed here. Stall speed's in the 50s, so I'm going to keep an eye on that. It does feel like I'm in a permanent crab here on approach. Like I'm flying straight, but at an angle. And there is no wind right now. There is no wind, but I feel like I'm crabbing. 
Yeah, I do feel like I'm at a very strange angle for some reason. Like, I'm going in runway heading, but I feel like I'm off heading slightly, which is very weird. And my feet aren't on the rudder pedals, but I'm permanently crabbing. This feels odd. Is the plane straight? It's not straight, no. Slip her down there. Okay. Blip a stall horn. We do have one. Straighten her up with the pedals. And we have good touchdown. Apply those brakes, which apparently are made of cheese or something. Actually, no, maybe the brakes are made of spaghetti. It's an Italian aeroplane. That's most likely the case. Really squeaky as well. Maybe there's a mice in the spaghetti. Mouse? A mice? Dear God. Maybe there's a mouse in the spaghetti. A mouse got into Parmesan. Yeah, it only seems to be the left brake as well that's super squeaky. Not the right one. Yep, always the left. This feels like unf an unfinished aircraft. It It's nice. It looks gorgeous. The ground handling feels weird. The engine power feels strange on the ground. I am motoring along here and it just doesn't seem to want to slow down. Even when I stop it here, I'm on, my throttles are idle. I'm not touching it. And off we go again. Yeah, it, it seems to have no weight to the aircraft almost. Like I'm picking up speed here and my throttle's not been touched. I'm idle on the throttle. And we're rocking along here. We're taking off apparently. Can I pull the nose up with this speed from idle throttle? We're passing through 20 knots. Uh, yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. Getting through 20 knots. Um, that shouldn't be happening. Again, this feels like a really great start. It looks good. And my, I'm both pedals on the brakes right now, see? And they don't move, apparently. You can see the rudder movement, but... I'm applying brakes, but they don't seem to do anything. Parking brake is on. And we'll cut the engine out there. There we go. Head's turned off. I cut the engine already. Could you please? Thank you. The sounds sound decent. And it does look good. But... It does feel unfinished, is the best way to describe it. It has potential. But it doesn't feel like it's been reached. Like, I'd, the, why can't you have opening doors, Nemeth? That would be fantastic. It's been both their aircraft, no opening doors, which on a payware aircraft is kind of a minimum requirement already. The gear sounds way too loud. The modelling's lovely. The textures are lovely. The ground handling... Feels like someone lubricated a ferret. And the weirdness with the engine and the sounds and when I moved the sun visors is a weird one. I think it has potential, but it's just not there yet. So, you decide. It's kind of hard for me to put a number on things, but... Make your opinions. Thanks for watching, folks. I've been told I'm dragging out the distance between the last comment and the bye. I totally am. Bye.